I shot across the sky and plummeted, just like a dropped feather wouldn't. I lay there bruised and bloodied, racked with pain. I reflected on all of life's tiny little hypocritical choices that had led me to this particular low point. My phone kept pounding into my head like a hummingbird on a particularly buggy tree. I did the only thing I could think of. I answered it. Her voice echoed in my ears like a starlet's chihuahua hurtling its rat voice throughout the airport. But I was fine. I've taken tougher hits than this. I just wish I'd thrown those hits instead. Shots rang out as shots are wont to do. I was forced to ascend two atrocious flights of stairs and an elevator before I could get to her apartment. Like a character in a bad action flick, I was just too late. The window had been shattered outward. With only one way out, I took the long fall, this time on purpose. Delgado had fallen four stories with a bullet in her head hitting the pavement like a hefty bag filled with vegetable soup. Knowing I'd be pinned as the button man, I hooked it to the subway. Turns out there weren't many life choices that had led me here, merely one, my desire to imitate Kermit the Frog in my own apartment. But it set the stage for quite the journey to come. My pager buzzed and I had no idea who it was. Melanie Rook. She was as innocent as a viper in a hen house and almost as cute. She knew my name. I did not know how. She was an astute dame, I had to give her that, but I was fine so long as my library ID number was still secret. I saw that I had underestimated her. It was a no-win situation for me. I was doomed from the start. She was offering me an olive branch. I had no idea if it would work. And thus, with the end of that call, my journey as a freelance spy continued.